Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Rita Alcolo. If this is your first time tuning in, thank you so very much for joining us. And if this is not your first time, thank you so much for coming back. I've been getting a lot of questions recently about my hair um, in terms of what it is that I do in terms of hair care routine, how it was that I grew my hair out, what products and, and things do I use. So I thought the very first thing I would like to do in terms of kind of talking about my hair would be to talk about how I grew my hair out really, really, really fast in about a little over a year, a little over a year. If you are interested in seeing how I went from this to this, then just keep on watching. To start off with, I would like to just talk a little bit about my journey. So I big chopped about six years ago, like big chopped, like everything was gone. So I had relaxed my hair, things just didn't go right then. So I cut my hair off. However, even though I was growing my hair naturally, I was still relaxing my perimeter because I wore weaves and things of that nature. At about, in about 2015, I noticed I was starting to lose a lot of hair. It was a combination of stress and also me trying to revert all of my hair back natural and trying to do it like drastically so there was no like in between. I was just doing a lot of braids and twists and that ended up making my perm ends thin out and they started to fall out. So I started to lose a lot of hair. So from the end of 2015, up until when that photo, my final photo was taken, you know, I was starting to follow a strict regimen in order to kind of take care of my hair and make sure that I was able to get my hair to flourish and grow naturally. No more relaxers, no more perms on any part of my hair. I'm going to give you 10 tips, tricks, and really like ground rules that I, I followed to grow my hair. So let's get so started. The very first tip that I'm gonna give you is to drink water. <laughs> okay, okay, I'm, I'm actually joking, but I'm just gonna say like, obviously drinking water is a given, like you have to drink water, duh. Not even just because of your hair, like just naturally, yes, you do have to drink water. So I'm not gonna, that's not a tip. I'm not gonna count that as a tip or as a, a groundbreaking rule for growing your hair, like drink water. Stay hydrated. I have my notes written right here. The first thing I am going to say is you do need to trim your ends. You need to trim your ends. And the reason why this is important is because one, it alleviates tension on the rest of your hair. In terms of having, if you have split ends or single strand stranded knots, you're gonna spend so much time trying to detangle those you know, whenever you're washing your hair or whenever you are styling your hair and you're trying to detangle your hair, you're gonna spend so much time trying to detangle those that you're gonna end up putting tension on the rest of your hair. Secondly, it allows for better product distribution and more better length retention. So when you trim your ends in terms of getting rid of all the dead hair, the dead ends, you're actually allowing for the products that you do put onto your hair to actually go onto the parts that need it, not the dead ends. You know, they're dead ends, they just need to be let go. This is really important for people who are transitioning, for those who maybe they were perming their perimeter initially and they're trying to go back natural, you're gonna have to trim your ends regularly. Don't just let your, your dead ends, your relaxed ends kind of grow out. Like, yes, you're gonna let them grow out, but you, you, you have to trim along the way to kind of make sure that you are, yes, getting rid of your dead ends, but you're also growing nice, healthy hair. The second tip is going to be scalp massaging. Now, I know a lot of people really do talk about scalp massaging and using scalp massagers and buying all sorts of devices and technology to massage a scalp. Just use your damn hands, okay? The way I did scalp massaging was by incorporating a particular oil. This is the Wild Growth Hair Oil. I think it's really big in the natural community, to be honest. I think a lot of people do know about it, but if you don't know about it, it's basically just, um, it's a hair oil that is composed of a lot of different types of oils. It's got olive oil, jojoba oil, coconut oil, um, vitamin D, it's got iron, magnesium, 
phosphorus, calcium, as well as the wild growth oil nutrient complex, which I guess is like their special secret sauce to help your hair grow. It's very thick in consistency. <coughs> the scent is strong, I'm not gonna lie. But what you do is you take the drops on your hand. I like to do this part, um, let's say after I have washed my hair. I don't do it when my hair is all out. My hair has to be sectioned off. Let's say it's like in twists, like I'm about to do a twist out or something. It's in twists. That way I can at least see more of my scalp. If my hair is just all out and I'm trying to massage my scalp, I don't feel like it's as effective. Scalp massaging um, improves blood circulation on your scalp and allows for your, you know, your follicles to open up and blood flow to increase, which allows for your hair to grow better. Incorporating um, something like this, which is kind of, it has a cooling, tingling sensation on the scalp it's not a bad sensation whatsoever but you take this on the palm of your hands and then massage it onto your scalp and it's absolutely it's amazing then the third tip the third ground rule is to limit or eliminate combs from your hair routine first off only comb your hair when it is wet you know if you can do eliminate or reduce I only like comb my hair or put combs to my hair twice a month, maybe twice a month. Throughout my wash routine, I don't I don't need to use combs. I finger detangle my hair. When I say twice a month, obviously there are times where detangling is just, you know, I need a smoother detangle with whatever style I'm doing. I'll go in with a wide tooth comb. But please, you need to be gentle with your hair. It's okay to finger detangle your hair. It's okay to not have perfect partings with your style, like it's not the end of the world. Combs cause a lot of tension to the hair. You know, it when you're pulling and snagging at the ends, even if it's a wide tooth comb, sometimes when it does get to your ends, you can't hear that little, those, you know, those snapping sounds, and you still end up seeing a lot of hair in your comb. So just be careful with how you use combs in your wash routine. When you are detangling, only when your hair is like nice and wet and you've got a nice, you know, a product with nice slip, then, you know, go in and detangle your hair. It should be more of a detangling and combs should be more of like a last resort. It should not be your first line of defense when it comes to detangling your hair. Please go in with your hands first. The fourth tip, wet your hair often let your hair get hydrated okay so i know this sounds crazy because it's like as naturals we tend to just run away from water but water is your friend water really is your friend sometimes you don't need to add more products to your hair you feel like your hair is dry sometimes all you have to do is just step into the shower without a shower cap and just let the steam he, um, hit your hair and just let your hair get hydrated that way and then you know you can twist it back up and that's that so you really don't always have to go in with more products more moisturizers you're weighing down your hair in that way sometimes all you need is just water whether it's by um, you know stepping into the shower allowing the steam to penetrate your hair having water or some form of liquid in a spray bottle that you can use in between um, your wash days to kind of hydrate your hair or another option is co-washing in between your washes in order to hydrate your hair and that way you're you're adding moisture to your hair yes with a bit of conditioner but you're rinsing it out and allowing water to kind of you know just get in your hair get in there so yes hydrate your hair more often your hair needs hydration your hair needs moisture especially if it is on the coarser side like mine you need a lot of moisture the next one i know some people are gonna get mad about this one but honestly use more natural products okay and i know that's some sort of thing like what the hell does that even mean use more natural products it means go back to the basics like sometimes i've been watching these natural hair tutorials and i'm looking like how many products can you actually try and really tell me works there is a curl bar whatever whatever then there's blueberry bliss butter pecan blah 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 ah, ah. 
it's too much it's too much what's it for you it's too much like for real for real how how many of these products can you say you're really genuinely using if you're using a different one every single day do not become a product junkie when it comes to understanding your natural hair if you're transitioning natural or if you are trying to grow your hair you really do have to understand what works best for your hair but that doesn't mean you have to literally try everything on the market the best way to kind of find what works on the market for you is actually to use the basic ingredients in the natural products. So for example, maybe you want to try something that has um, black Jamaican castor oil in it. You know, a particular brand might have black Jamaican castor oil in it. Well, do you know if black Jamaican castor oil agrees with your hair first off? Have you tried black Jamaican castor oil yourself? Maybe you want to try a um, coconut deep conditioner routine, blah, 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 blah. You know, like a, a product that, that, that has a lot of coconut oil in it. Have you tried natural coconut oil in your hair? Maybe this thing claims to have shea butter, olive oil, all these other natural products. But have you tried those natural ingredients yourself? You need to make sure that those ingredients, first of all, agree with your hair before you go out and buy all these other products and then later on find out that they don't really work for you or for your hair type. So it's really, really essential that you at least try the basics out first. It, it makes your, it's simple. They're ingredients you can pronounce, okay? And because they're ingredients they're, that you can pronounce, they're natural, it makes it easier on your hair, more gentler on your hair in order for you to transition into make, you know, working your way up into more aggressive products, you know, products with more ingredients in them. So I would honestly, honestly recommend that you simplify simplify the products that you do put in your hair. If those natural products don't work for you, at least you know, okay, maybe the products on the market with these ingredients would not work for me. Does that make sense? Okay, I hope that makes sense because that really helped me a lot. Sixth rule is regulating your washes, okay? Now when I say regulating your washes, I mean training your hair the products you add into it, the maintenance of your hair, the outcome of your styles, moisture retention. These things are all part of training your hair and they can all be achieved by training your hair. And one of the best ways to do this is coming up with a schedule, setting like a, a set time frame in which you regulate your washes. I feel like this is especially important for those who are product junkies. As much as we like to add and add and add and buy and buy all these products on the market for our hair, you need to remember that your hair does need to breathe. So regulating your washes, I can't tell you how often to wash your hair, okay? Personally, especially because I use wild growth hair oil on my scalp, I'm not trying to clog my scalp. I have to wash my hair every single week, okay? You it may you may not, you know, use a, a heavy oil on your hair or your scalp so you may want to actually wash your hair every two weeks some people may want to wash their hair every month but remember you also got to hydrate your hair in between you don't want to end up weighing down your hair or your scalp and let me tell you regulating your wash is not just for your hair and your scalp it's also for your skin okay because all that product laying on your hair can you imagine like li literally leaving a month's worth of product in your hair and having it touching your face like it's on your your scarf and you're putting your scarf on your pillow and then like it's just it's not hygienic after a while it's just it's just really not the way to go so you may just want to try washing your hair a bit more often regulate your washes it's gonna help train your hair as well with the products that you're using in order for something to be effective for you you're gonna have to use it more often anyways okay so the next thing is properly detangling your hair slash arranging your strands okay so when it comes to this some people may call it co-washing some people may call it pre-poo some people may call it detangling i really don't care i personally call it arranging my strands i may use the, it, it might be the same product i'm using but i'll use it in different ways so 
Whether you want to use a particular conditioner or a particular deep, con- um, a particular detangler. Okay, I personally don't think you need to go out and buy another product that's called detangler when you can just use a conditioner, but that's just me. Um, but it's important that you don't skip this step. Do not just wash your hair and then go condition. I really do suggest detangling your hair, whether it's in the pre-poo phase or whether it's, you know, in the detangling phase before you go in with your deep conditioner. I personally, I have to, have to, have to go in and properly detangle my hair in order to make sure that my strands are nicely arranged because like I said, I don't use combs a lot at all. Some other ways that people make sure that they are detangling properly is by sectioning off their hair. Not everybody needs to section off their hair. When I shampoo my hair, I don't section off my hair. I don't section off my hair until I'm about to detangle. Some people can't do that. Some people gotta um, section off their hair for the wash phase. So it's up to you how you wanna go about that, but just make sure that you come up with a, um, a system that works well for your hair to make sure that your strands are organized properly so that you don't have tension on your hair so that you're not losing hair throughout this entire process. My next tip, number eight, is to deep condition often. Okay, if the world really was a perfect world, I would be deep conditioning or I would recommend that people deep condition every week. So your hair is nicely cleansed, your hair has been conditioned, but now you're giving your your hair all the whatever it is that it is lacking that's what your deep conditioner would be um giving your hair the deep conditioning phase is extremely important for that particular reason this is the this is the phase where you are able to give your hair exactly what it is that it needs and the way you're able to figure that out also goes back to you know one of my previous tips about regulating your washes and training your hair And if you are regulating your washes and training your hair and your deep conditioning, your deep conditioning using a particular deep conditioner that addresses those needs. So you may need a protein deep conditioner for your hair, or you may need moisture deep conditioner for your hair. You may need strengthening. You may need um, something to see, you know, that seals in your hair or coats your hair nicely. Then the best way to find this out is by regulating washes. Deep condition as often as you can, but use specific deep conditioners that address your hair's specific needs. My ninth tip was one I really actually stumbled upon. I wouldn't say accidentally, but I didn't expect it to have the effect it did have on my hair. So around my sophomore year, Um, It was like the end of sophomore year. I'll enter the picture on the screen. I noticed my hair was literally like just falling out, okay? It was stress, poor diet, um, and then some some heat damage and, you know, like I said, having the perm ends until I stopped that, you know, junior year. I was trying to add more leafy greens into my diet. I cannot stand the texture of and it's not that i hate vegetables i just can't stand the texture of kale or spinach i started green juicing so making green smoothies with my kale my spinach things of that nature but what i didn't realize that yes it was good for my body but it was really great for my hair with spinach dark leafy greens you're able to get a lot of minerals and nutrients that are really necessary for your hair and two of these minerals that um spinach does have um is iron and zinc zinc is so 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 essential especially for individuals who are suffering from hair loss of some form sometimes it's not genetics or anything or maybe you're not taking proper care sometimes you might be actually deficient in this mineral or in certain minerals and zinc is one of them so i would say green juicing or upping your intake of leafy greens especially spinach add in some kale um but dark leafy greens are high high, very high in these minerals so definitely green juicing for sure i highly recommend it 
especially if you don't like eating vegetables, you may want to try drinking your vegetables. My 10th and final tip, leave your damn hair alone. <laughs> this is so important, okay? Leave your hair alone. When it comes to leaving your hair alone, a lot of people automatically think protective styles and when they think protective styles, they think of braids, twists, okay, maybe some wigs, but those are not the only options. Like, you can protective style with your natural hair being left out, um, whether it's like twists, natural twists, or even bunning your hair. Like, I have my hair today in a low bun, one, because I don't wanna deal with it, but two, because my ends are tucked away. My favorite, favorite protective style ever, cur my curly unit, okay? So I'm gonna insert some pictures here. So from October to December, I had my curly hair in, then I took it out in December because I wanted to trim my ends. Um, I trimmed my ends, I wore my hair out for a little bit, and then from January all the way till August, okay, so look at time span, I was literally, my hair was literally in this unit. So I would take it out obviously every two to three weeks, wash my hair down, put it back in, um, take it out again two to three weeks wash my hair put it back in and the best part about this about curly units is that when it comes to blending your natural hair with curly units you don't need to apply heat okay I got coarse hair too okay you do not need to apply heat to blend your leave out okay and curly units actually encourage you to wash your hair more because you kind of have to hydrate the curls as often as possible so you're gonna need to take it off regularly um, in order to make sure that your hair is not getting moldy underneath but that you're also conditioning your units nicely and that your leave out is also conditioned nicely so it helped my hair to grow I'm not even lying, this is gonna be the this is the biggest part, leaving my hair alone. So taking care of it underneath, but literally just leaving it alone to just grow and do its thing while still getting to rock my weeds. It was literally like the best of both worlds. I kid you not, guys. I literally did not have to apply heat onto my hair and I got to wear wait my I got to wear curly hair. I got to wear weave, like it was the best of both worlds. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you did enjoy this video, this tutorial, well, not really a tutorial, but me just spewing a whole bunch of knowledge on how I was able to grow my hair, you can check out a few of my other videos right here. I'm gonna leave them right here. Check out a few of my other videos. And if you guys have any other suggestions as to natural hair videos you would like for me to, to do, um, do leave them down in the comment section down below. Like, let me know if you guys want to see like products that I do use or maybe how I do wash my hair, how I styles, do certain styles in my hair. Let me know in the comment section down below what you would like to see. I really appreciate you guys stopping by and watching this video. Thank you so much and I do hope to see you in another video very soon. Until then, stay blessed and stay golden.